Hello, I'm Hayley from Creative Photo Folk, and today you're going to learn a simple yet effective editing technique called mirroring that you can use with your zoo or wildlife photos to create entirely new creatures. Now, I love using the mirroring technique in Photoshop. The results are often trippy and surprising, and I go into much more detail about them inside my course, Photo Fanatics. But for today, we'll purely be working with shots of animals. So here's the before image we will be working with, and here's the result. Quite creepy, certainly trippy, and a little bit fun. What you would use it for, I'm not sure, but they're really fun to create, and that's what we're here for. Now, when looking for animal photos, it's important to remember a few things. Firstly, ideally, they want to be good shots. They want to be well composed. You want to have their eyes in focus. So that pretty much goes without saying. If you can, try and get as close to the animal as possible, even if it requires a little bit of cropping. Now, when looking for images to work with, if they are too far around to the side, you get this effect here where they just look really big, which might be the effect you want. It's not really what I tend to go for, but I just wanted to show you that example. Alternatively, if you use an, an image where the animal is facing directly to the camera, you get this result, which is still kind of cute, but it actually just looks like a panda looking at you. So if they are facing you head on, then when you flip them, they're just going to kind of look exactly the same. So it's best if your animal is facing just slightly away from you, not too much and not too little. So how do we do this technique? Well, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is make sure your image is open in Photoshop. If that's not the case, you would go to File and then Open and locate the image on your disk. Now we want to make a duplicate of the image. However, we don't want to duplicate the whole thing because then we will not have the illusion we're going for. So we want to choose the bit of the image that we do want to duplicate and flip. So to do that, we are going to choose our rectangular marquee tool. It's the second one down on your toolbar. And if it comes up as any of these others, just make sure you click and hold it to access this hidden menu and make sure rectangular marquee tool is selected. Now what we're going to do is choose the bit that we want mirrored. So I probably want there and this is where it can get a little bit experimental you can play with what you choose in this section over and over again now i will probably just try and keep a little bit of the nose but get rid of the right hand eye so about there then i'm going to press Control or command j to pop that onto its own layer but the other thing you could do is crop the image first so for example if you've got a lot of dead space you want to get rid of you would activate your crop tool which is the fifth down on your toolbar accessed with the shortcut C, making sure WH and resolution are chosen because that will allow you to freehand change the dimensions. And you would choose your crop, but before you hit your tick box, make sure that delete cropped pixels is checked. Otherwise, when you come to the flipping process later on, it will flip the whole image and not just the bit that was cropped. So it's important to make sure that is on and then click the tick. However, I always straight away go back and uncheck delete cropped pixels because I like to work with images where I keep the cropped pixels in case I decide to recrop bigger. And so if I didn't have that on, then it would lose those pixels. So this just keeps them handy. But for this one, we definitely want it on. Now, let me just undo that because that is not what we want. So making sure that your top layer is highlighted, the one we just did the marquee around and then duplicated. And we will go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. So we can move this across. And I'm just going to undo that. The best thing to do is hold down Shift as you move it. That way it can't move up or down. And drag that into place. Now you'll need to be very careful about making sure whoops, that it hits the exact seam line. And you can do that by zooming in with your zoom tool over here or pressing Z. And holding down Shift again finding that exact match spot. And if you get close, but you don't hit it, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Now, sometimes it is hard to find. I think that's right there. So we'll zoom back out and we've got a problem. We've lost a little bit of the image on the side. So to fix that, we will activate our crop tool again with C and just drag that out and hit tick. And then we have our results. So as you can see, 
on my original version, I had made that marqueed first section even a little bit tighter, and I think I prefer that. So that's why it is worth experimenting with the little marquee that you draw and how much you include or don't include. But that is essentially the technique. So I have tried this on lots and lots of animals. So let's go through a few more examples. As you can see, I did do a couple more experiments, but I really thought it looked better with the nose. So you can see how it's good to try and include all their features if you can. Next, we have another fox. This is a white fox and I think that's kind of cute. I haven't yet cropped it down because I wanted to show you the original. So you'll see how it is a little bit turned to the side. It's not directly facing the camera. Then we've got our polar bear. And again, I think he was just a little bit too faced away. So the original looked like that. And it's not a terrible result, but I'm not too fond of the two body situation. So then we've got an owl and I kind of like this. Like he does look really cubist. It's quite strange. And I love the background, how it's become mirrored like that. We would still have to crop this down a little, but this is what the original look like. So you can see he was not quite facing the camera and that's why it's got a weird kind of cubist look to it. We've got a lemur, which is quite cool. In this case, I do quite like the two bodies. So that's why it's worth experimenting and the original look like that. Then we have our flamingo. That kind of looks like a urinal, which makes me laugh, but I do like how this shape came out. So that is pretty cool. And so that's what that one looked like initially. Then we'll pop on over to a few more I've made previously. Again, I really actually like the two bodies in this one, so it can work just as long as it doesn't make them look really large and they kind of merge in the middle. I think that's the key there. So if the bodies are separate, it can look quite good. But this is why you really need to experiment. Then we have this little wombat guy here who is kind of cute, I guess. This guy. And lastly, this one here. So sometimes they're cute. Sometimes you certainly would not want to meet them in the wild. So if you feel like getting a little creative but your juices just aren't flowing, this might be a fun one to play with to see what you can whip up. So thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to like and subscribe so I can see you in our next tutorial. Happy creating. Bye.